Okay, now we're going to do the same uh, force balance but on node 2. So if we look at node 2, now we do some forces equal 0 for node 2. If we look at node 2, again we're going to take a little cross section. Now it'll be just to the left of node 2. This is what our free body diagram will look like. We have the externally applied force F2. And now again, balancing or equilibrating F2 is going to be the um, internal force. Now, uh, this the internal forces are going to change direction, and that's because of the fact that the positive sense of the internal force is corresponding to uh, a tensile stress. Okay, So if, if we have a positive stress in here, a tensile, a tensile stress. Okay, so if this bar is in tension, the internal force is going to act to the left. So this is going to be that F internal, which is equal to the stress times the cross-sectional area. This is the exact same stress and cross-sectional area as we got up above. So that's uh, equal to this AE on L D2 minus D1. Okay, so now if we do the sum of forces on, on node 2, we get that minus sigma a, it's minus because this is acting in the negative x direction, plus f2 is equal to zero, and substituting in for sigma a, ae on l, d2 minus d1, we get minus ae on l, d2 minus d1, plus f2 is equal to zero, now we'll get into the same form here. Let's bring F2 to the right-hand side, and then we'll multiply by minus 1 to get the F positive. We get A, E, on L, minus D1, plus D2, equals F2. Okay, so that's the force balance on the second note. So we have two equations and two nodal unknowns, right? The two nodal unknowns are D1 and D2. Uh, so the two equations, each equation is going to constitute a row in the stiffness matrix. And we already have this uh, kind of this KD equals F form, okay? So let me just show that, and we're almost done. Let me move this up here for now. All right. So we get another piece of paper. All right. So um, we call this equation one and this equation two. We'll write them right on top of each other. So I got A E on L D one minus D two is equal to F one and A E on L D two Oops, sorry. Let's do minus D1 plus D2 equals F2. So we keep it in a consistent order, and you'll see why in a second. This uh, I can write in matrix form. So these are equivalent. So this is the same as writing AE on L1 minus 1 minus 1, 1. D1. 2 equals F1, F2. Okay? So you can see that these two equations are the same. So this first row is equation 1. D1 minus D2 times AE on L is equal to F1. And likewise, the second equation gives you a minus D1 plus D2 times AE on L, that's the left-hand side here, is equal to F2, okay? So if we compare this back to what we wanted to find originally, here, we can see obviously that this quantity is the element stiffness matrix, okay? So um, in this situation, 
we're done right and so the stiffness matrix for a one-dimensional bar element is simply a e on l one minus one minus one one okay and that's it uh just a couple of things to note so a is the cross-sectional area of the particular element e and l are also particular to the element so you can see um, this is the same quantities you get as if you consider it just to be a simple spring, right? So you make the cross-sectional area bigger, the stiffness goes up. You make the bar longer, the stiffness goes down. You increase the material stiffness through Young's modulus, the stiffness goes up. Okay? All right. Well, that's it.